Welcome back to another Python tutorial. This is going to be part three of our tic-tac-toe game. What we have so far is we've drawn the board and then we have our two different shapes, the square and the circle, which will represent the two different players. So let's go ahead before we start, let's just go ahead and run it and see what we have so far. So this is what we have up to this point. So we have our game board drawn on the screen. And then when I click on a square, it draws both of the shapes. And it works in all the nine different squares. So what we're going to work on in this video is setting up a two-player system so that when one player clicks, it'll maybe be the circle. And then when the next player clicks, it'll be the other shape, the square. All right, let's go ahead and dive in and get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is set it up so that when one player clicks, it'll be the circle or the rectangle. It doesn't really matter which one starts with. And then when the next player clicks, it'll be the opposite shape. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is come up here. And right above the while wow run loop, I'm going to be making another variable. I'm going to call this one draw object. Just like that. And in the beginning, I'm going to be setting it to a string called rect for rectangle. And what I'm going to be doing with this draw object, this is what I'm going to use to keep track of whose turn it is. So when the draw object is equal to rect for rectangle, we're going to have it whenever the player clicks, it'll draw a rectangle. And then after that happens, we'll switch it to circle. And then whenever the draw object equals circle, then we'll draw a circle. Okay, so after this, what we have to do is I'm going to come down under the first one. And I'm going to create an if statement that says if draw object is double equal since we're comparing and if this is equal to rect for rectangle then I'm gonna go ahead and draw the rectangle so it's important that we put that tab there so that this line of code um, belongs to this if statement here and also I forgot don't forget to put your colon at the end so what we're saying with this line if draw object is equal to rectangle or rect then we're gonna draw the rectangle in that square and then down here we're going to say else. If it's not equal to rect, then we're going to draw the circle. And we have to do one more thing so that after the player who's the rectangle clicks on the square, we want it to switch the draw object to circle. So to do that, right below this line here, I'm going to set draw object equal to circle. And we just need one equal sign this time because we're just reassigning the variable. Just like that. And then this one would be, be the opposite. So in the else case, it would be equal to circle. So after the circle gets done with third turn, we just want to switch the draw object back to rect for rectangle. Okay, and basically now we're just going to do that for each of the other squares. Okay, and once you finish that up, it should look like this. So under each section, it should have the same basic format. You have an if statement for if draw object is equal to rectangle. If that's true, then you'll go ahead and draw the rectangle. And after you draw the rectangle, then you're going to switch the draw object to circle. And then once the other player goes, the draw object will be equal to circle. So it's not going to fall under this category here. It'll go under the else statement. And once it's there, it'll draw the circle and then switch the draw object back to rectangle. So this is the same basic format that you'll have for each of your other squares. And then once you do that, you should have something that looks like this. So when the first player clicks, it'll draw a square. When I click on the next one, it'll draw a circle and then it'll continue that alternating while you're playing. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna fix, we still have uh, one more issue with our game, and that is if a player clicks on a square that's already filled up, like this first one here, if I click on it, then it draws a circle on top of that square. So let's go ahead and head back to the code and see how we can fix that. So what we need to do is have a way to keep track if a square is filled or not. So to do that, I'm gonna be creating some more variables up here. And you can call these whatever you want to, but I'm going to call this one first open. 
and I'm going to set this equal to false. Oh, not false. If it's open, it's going to be true. So if it's available, false open will be equal to true. And then what I'm going to do for my first if statement, I'm going to say if first.collide point, so if the mouse is clicked in that square, and first open. So remember we set this to true. So when we click on that square for the first one, there's nothing in it. So this will be true. So this will run here. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to put another line of code right here. So this is in line with the if and the else statement. And I'm going to say first underscore open is equal to false. So the reason I put it here, so after this if statement is satisfied, it'll check these two statements. And then after it does whichever one it's satisfied, then it'll set first, um, to first open equal to false. So what that is doing is we're saying that this first one is filled up. There's an object in it already. And then if they try to click it again, this first.collide point, that'll be true. But this one will be false. And if there's a false and a true, that means it's a false. And it won't run any of this code here. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out with the very first one. Okay, so I'm going to click on the first one. So right now, the first open is true. So I should be able to click and draw a shape. Good. Now first open is equal to false. So if I click on this box again, there should be nothing happening. Good. And we see that nothing's happening. So all we have to do now is put that line of code under each of our other blocks. So what I'm going to do is just create variables for the other squares. And once again, you can call these whatever you want to. I'm just going to call this one second open and so on. OK, and when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. So we have our different variables for each of the squares. And we're setting these equal to true at the beginning because they're open or available. And then for each of the sections down here, we're adding an and statement that says and. And then the particular square underscore open. So this is testing to make sure that the mouse is clicked in that particular square. And that first or whatever square it is, is actually available. If those two are true, then what we're going to do is draw the particular object and then set that square equal to false, which means it's taken up and it's not available to be clicked anymore. And then you just continue that for each of the other sections. So for example, for the second one, we have the and statement for second underscore open. Once the player draws the object, then we're setting this square equal to false to say that it's not available anymore. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. So I can click in each of the squares just like before, and it alternates. Now if I try to click on any of these squares, it doesn't draw another shape on top of it. So if you're another player, you can't draw on top of the shape the other player did. OK, so the last thing we're going to try to add to this is a reset button. So right now, the only way to clear off the screen would be to close out of it and then rerun it. But we're going to set it up that whenever you press spacebar, it clears out the screen and you can start a new game. So let's head back to the code and see how we can do that. So what we need to do to add our reset button into the game is we need to keep track of a new event. And that new event is going to be whenever the spacebar is clicked. So I'm going to say if event dot type is equal to pi game dot key down all capital. Okay, then we're going to write another if statement that says if event dot key is equal to pi game dot k underscore space. Okay, so first we're checking to see if any key is pressed. And then we're checking to see if that key was a space key. If it was a space key, then we need to do a couple different things. So one of the things we need to do is clear off the screen. And we're going to do that by just redrawing the whole thing. And then we also have to reset all of our open variables back to true. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is just redraw the screen. So to do that, I'm just going to come up to the top and copy this right here. So this is how we drew the screen in the beginning. And then I'm just going to paste it down here. 
Okay, and just go ahead and fix the formatting if it does that. Okay, and we can go ahead and test real quick to make sure that whenever we press the space bar, it redraws the screen. Oops, and this one's double equals because we're comparing. We're seeing if this event key stores this value. Okay, so I'll draw a couple shapes and then I'll press the space bar and it clears out the shapes. So that part is good. So all we have left to do is just reset all of the different variables back to true. So to do that, I can just come up here and we'll copy these. And then let's paste these at the top. It doesn't really matter where you paste them. I'm just going to put them at the top. And another thing you can do, instead of pressing tab a bunch of times, if you highlight all these, you can go to format and then indent region. And you can just press it a couple times until it gets in the right spot. And there we go. So let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, so I'll do a couple clicks on the boxes. Okay, I'm ready to restart my game. So I press spacebar and then I can restart with new shapes. Okay, this is going to be the end of this video. Feel free to customize it and make the game your own. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.